Minpu here, and today I'm excited to try a new thermal application for my gaming laptop. The product is the Honeywell PTM7950 Phase Change Thermal Pad. I purchased it from e 7 The size I chose was 80x80x2mm. 80 80 the product did not come in a tube, but in a pressed form. There is a tube version for purchase on the site, and I may try that later. Here are the specs for the PTM7950, and to the right is the Cryonaut for those interested. The PTM 7950 SP is the tube version as it has a viscosity of 2.5 while the flat PTM 7950 is solid. Thermal conductivity is the same for both PTMs at 8.5 while the Cryonaut is 12.5. The PTM 7950 arrived in this small packaging with the following contents. A small Phillips driver, a triangle sized plastic pry tool, a slender angled plastic pry tool, two finger rubbers, a small brush with dual prongs on the other side, four alcohol pads, and a piece of folded cardboard with the PTM7950 inside. The two green pieces are pull tape. If you try this, make sure to take precautions to ground yourself and to try to prevent damage to internal components. Shut down the machine, remove the power cord, turn it over, and remove the screws to the panel. If you want more details, check my other video on repasting and dismantling the laptop. This is the overview of the machine with the bottom panel removed. After removing the screws to the heatsink, you will have to remove the Wi-Fi cables or the display cables or both if you choose to do so. The wires are also located under the black tape on both fans. For this application, I will just remove the Wi-Fi connectors as it's easier. Start by disconnecting the battery cable. Disconnect the right fan connector. Disconnect the left fan connector. Pry the tape up here, then disconnect the Wi-Fi cable. Pry up the tape here. For the rest of the removal, click the link in the corner. With the heat sink removed, I'll clean up the thermal grease and K5 Pro. It's okay if some of the K5 Pro residue is left inside crevices. You can clean it up with paper towels, cotton balls, Q-tips, and alcohol. With everything cleaned up, it's time to measure. Measuring the GPU, I got 14.66 by 15.04 millimeters. The CPU measured 19.99 by 9.75 millimeters. I'm sure my measurements may have been off by a few tenths of a millimeter, so it's okay to round up just to make sure that you get the full coverage. The calipers were sharp and I didn't want to damage the processors. The pad will be soft, so after you cut to size, slip it in the freezer for a few minutes. I'll cut to size without a razor. It will make it easier if you had one. This is the tricky part. You can use the included tape or 3M scotch tape to help you remove the protective film. My finger accidentally touched it. Luckily, I had gloves on as usual. The easiest for me was to remove one side first using a needle, then apply. Once on the processor, use a needle and forceps to remove the top layer. The warmer it gets, the more difficult it becomes to work with. When finished, apply your thermal pads to the rest of the machine and replace the heatsink. Connect all the cables to the fans, Wi-Fi Bluetooth module, display, and battery. Once you're done, give everything a once over and make sure everything is connected. Everything looks good here. I use K5 Pro for the rest of the machine. Now to attach the bottom, add the screws, and give it a go. The first test is using New Dawn as it really uses the CPU. The left is Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut and the right is Honeywell PTM7950. The settings I'll be using are graphics set to ultra, power set to balanced, and fans on auto. This is incredible. I'm seeing temperatures as wide as 14 degrees in some areas. You can easily say that you'll have a decrease of 10 degrees on average for the CPU. Even the GPU is down by 5C. The next test is the same for everything except that the power profile is set to performance. This is great. The gains are still there. At one point, there was a difference of 16 degrees. Wow, this is, this is crazy. This is even continuing with the GPU having an eight degree difference.
Next, we'll only change the fan speed to max. Both are performing really good, but the Honeywell just wins. The GPU temps are close, but the gap widens with the CPU as we've seen in the others. The fan being max speed really helps out. In the last three tests I've ran, the Honeywell never went anywhere near 90C, so the CPU can run as intended. This is great news for those not wanting to use liquid metal. In the next three tests, I only used throttle stop only for the benchmark test. No undervolt was used. Hardware Info 64 will be open so you can see if the machine throttles and other technical info. I will run each benchmark for three minutes with 90 seconds in between to cool. The CPU usage will be up slightly as I'm recording the test with the machine. The first test using Thermal Grizzly, the CPU starts to throttle just under a minute while the Honeywell side was staying decently well under 90C. In the end, Cryonaut had a max temp of 94C while the PTM7950 max temp was 82. Next up is performance mode. The Cryonaut throws up the throttle sign right at 90 seconds while the PTM7950 is killing it with cool temps. When finished, the Cryonaut side maxed out at 93C while the Honeywell was at 82C.
The last test is performance mode with max fans. In the end, both never throttled, which is always a good thing. The Cryonaut maxed out at 86C, while the PTM7950 had 80C. I'm sure you noticed there's a lot of information on the screen. I purposely did this as you can see for yourself what the average temps, current temps, and processor speeds are. If you look at the first test with throttle stop, you will see as the machine throttles, the PL1 will reduce wattage to get the temps under control. That should be interesting for people just getting into undervolting. This doesn't happen anymore with the last two tests. Anyway, I think the Honeywell PTM7950 is a fantastic alternative to what currently is on the market, even liquid. Reason why I say this is because you can't destroy your machine if you're not familiar with the liquid metal and it will not eat your heatsink. I have to say again, I've never seen thermal grease perform this well without an added undervolt. So if you're in need of a repace, this is it. I have a link in the description to purchase and I believe you can get it on AliExpress. So far, no one is selling on Amazon. It took exactly 15 days for my package to arrive from China, so there is a little wait to get it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.